This video is covering replication of DNA, which is the second subtopic from Unit 1 in Higher Human Biology. Um, and this video is the second of this section, and it's about replication. So if you haven't looked at the previous one about structure of DNA, that would probably be the best place to start, um, because this covers a lot of the, the basics. Um, and you would really need to know the details from beforehand to understand this. So looking at this, we have currently a DNA molecule. And from the previous video, we discussed nucleotides, DNA nucleotides. And that's what's represented by the area I've just circled. So that E would be adenine, which is a base. And the small line and this bit here would be the remaining part of the nucleotide. Okay, so for easiness of showing this in a diagram, it's not drawn as a filling nucleotide, it's just drawn as some lines. Okay, this whole part here is one strand, and then this whole part here is another strand. Now it looks different, and I'll discuss that in a second. But first of all, what I'd like to do is talk about the prime end. Okay, so this end would be a three prime end, which is what ends in a deoxyribose sugar. Therefore, along this strand down here would be a five prime end. And because this is a five prime end, this on the other side should be a three prime end. Okay, and again, following it along in this anti-parallel arrangement, this therefore would be our five prime end, which would end in a phosphate. Okay, so in terms of basics, that's the rest of um, the DNA structure stuff wouldn't be covered in the previous video. So I'm not going to go into what a nucleotide is and etc. etc. So in terms of the stages of replication, the very first stage has already been um, shown in this, which is where the molecule of DNA has been untwisted. So it used to be a DNA um, double helix, but now it is open. Okay, so the DNA molecule is untwisted, and then the hydrogen bonds between those bases have broken. So that has allowed the strands to separate, and which is what you see here. So to begin replication, after that DNA molecule is untwisted and the strands have separated, we have to add a primer to this. So a primer is a short strand of complementary nucleotides, DNA nucleotides and it would bind to an area on that open strand. So I'm going to do one strand first and then the next one because they are very different in how they replicate. So if you had a primer here, this would be guanine. So therefore, in terms of complementary base pairing, this should therefore be cytosine. This would be guanine and this would be adenine. Now each of those is bonded using hydrogen bonds. Okay, as with all DNA molecules, Bases are bonded with hydrogen bonds. Okay, so this molecule here is our primer and it's needed to begin replication. So in terms of prime ends, if this is a three prime, this must be a five prime end. And therefore, if this is a five prime, this would be a three prime. Now this is important for replication because this side is what's known as the leading strand. Now the leading strand is replicated continuously. So what I mean by that is it is replicated without any gaps in it. It continuously adds nucleotides all the way along and won't stop until the replication stops. So the enzyme that does this is called DNA polymerase and it's sometimes shown as a kind of kidney bean shaped molecule that looks like that. And it can be shown at any point on this new strand that's um, going to be growing in a second. So this would be DNA polymerase. Now the important thing about DNA polymerase is that it adds nucleotides to the three prime end of the primer. So it can only add to this side along the way. So now what we need to get are some free DNA nucleotides, which will be floating about in the nucleus, which is where this all occurs. And it will bring a nucleotide in and it will bind to this open strand. And based on complementary base pairing, because this is cytosine, this would be guanine. Okay, and it would bind the nucleotide on, and it would do that through hydrogen bonding. Okay, now the same thing occurs all the way along this strand. Each base pairs and brings its own nucleotide in. Okay, and all those are joined with hydrogen bonds. Okay, and I'm not going to go too close into this fork, 
because I don't want to get too squished in with the diagram. Now we have all these nucleotides basically just being bonded by hydrogen bonds, but they are not at the moment a DNA strand. Now to form a DNA strand, we have to then create a sugar phosphate backbone. And that sugar phosphate backbone is formed using sugar phosphate bonds. And that would bond one nucleotide to the next. So a sugar to a phosphate, another sugar to another phosphate, all the way along, forming this continuous backbone. Okay, so this would be your sugar phosphate backbone. Now because this has been replicated continuously, it's known as a leading strand, like I said, the other strand is known as a lagging strand. Now that lagging strand is a bit more complex than the leading strand, and it's due to the fact that DNA polymerase can only bind nucleotides to the three prime end of the primer. So to demonstrate that, I'll um, put an example in here. So if I put a primer in here, if we talk about prime ends, this is the five prime, so therefore this will be three prime, and this therefore will be the five prime. So if I wanted DNA polymerase to come in and add nucleotides and make a new strand, it would only be able to add here, and there's nothing for it to bind to here, there's no other bases. So what we need to do is move a primer in, in the middle of that strand further up. So for example, if I popped the primer in here, Okay, this is the three prime end of that primer. This is the five prime end. So now DNA polymerase can come in and it can attach to this primer and bring in the appropriate nucleotides to then make this bit of the strand. So if we have a thymine here, we have an adenine here. Okay, and then thymine here, etc. etc. And notice how it can only do it in sections, so you'd have to keep adding along and along. So these nucleotides are bonded with hydrogen bonding, and now they need to form a sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so sugar phosphate bonding comes in and binds those nucleotides in. Okay, and then we'd have to get another primer in here. And then do the same thing again. So if this is the three prime end, we need to get DNA polymerase to come in again and add nucleotides onto that end. So we'd have adenine in here, and join on, we have cytosine and then guanine, okay, and those nucleotides are joined using a sugar phosphate backbone again. Now because this strand is replicated in fragments, what we need to do is zip all this up and seal it all together. Okay, and the enzyme that does that then is what's called DNA ligase. So this lagging strand is joined by another enzyme called DNA ligase. Now that one is often not shown in a diagram because DNA polymerase is often shown instead. Okay, this is more of a point to mention later on about the fragments being joined together. Now this whole process continues on, this um, twisted area will untwist and it will spread right away along and it will separate the strands and this whole process will continue all the way along until it needs to stop, whether that's because it runs out of DNA or because it's copied the bit that it needs to. And once that's completed, these two new strands that you form, the leading and the lagging, will be two entirely new strands of DNA and they will then twist to become their own double helices. So one would twist form here a double helix, and the same with this one. Okay, so to summarize all this, I have listed these stages. Okay, so stage one, initially the double helix untwists and the hydrogen bonds between the bases break. So that's been shown already in the diagram. The primers bind to complement to the areas in open strand. The primers are shown with this blue section here. DNA polymerase, which is your enzyme, which is in pink, will add nucleotides, free DNA nucleotides, the three prime end of that primer.
or to the continually growing strand. So once those molecules, or once those um, nucleotides have bonded, they're bonded using hydrogen bonds, okay? Then the sugar phosphate backbone will form, and that's shown in green. The leading strand is continuously in the lagging strand is in fragments, and that fragments are joined by DNA ligase. Okay, and then at the end of it all, they form their two new double helices. Okay, so I'm going to complete the video by leaving that there, in case you want to take a screenshot of it. The next video will be about PCR, which is about the same idea, about replication of DNA, but this time with temperatures.